Hello winners, it's Drew, and <laughs> it's been a while. Sorry for the lack of content in the past month or so, I've been caught up in some real life events as well as started and threw out a bunch of videos. With a lack of time, I just wasn't happy with the quality of the videos I started, so I threw out a bunch of them. So, in an attempt to get back on track, I want to make a video and talk about crit on Switch X. I personally have converted the majority of my builds to be crit builds this update, and expect to continue going with crit going into title update 3. However, I don't mean for this video to indicate whether you should go one way or the other. I think that the general perception of crit on Switch X is not very good, and I want to show the math behind it to make it more clear and so you can understand why you might want to use it. A uh, number of things to point out before we start. I will not be considering Bloodlust and Dereliction in these first comparisons, but I will show what they would look like later in the video. I personally don't run these skills as they are a little too tedious for my level of play. Basically, I'm bad, and over time, I just stop finding these skills to be that fun to use. I'm a pretty casual player, and I play a lot of multiplayer, so I opt to prioritize comfort skills like Evade Extender and Power Prolonger. So this first comparison will not account for the quote-unquote suicide skills. If you're not familiar with how damage works in Monster Hunter Rise, I recommend you check out my video on it. I think it's pretty good. I'll have it linked in the description below, as well as at the end of the video. So to lay out some expectations, normally on Switch Axe we say that crit is not as good because foul bursts cannot crit, and getting more attack is generally better because it affects both our ordinary attacks and our foul bursts. So I will be using Rajang as an example for this, and the calculations will be as if we were hitting Rajang in the head. The hit zone for Rajang's head is 65 raw and 30 ice. The switch axe being used here will be the Deora switch axe using the switcher rampage decoration, and two points will be in the attack augment and four in the element augment. So my comparison will be based on investing seven points into attack boost or seven points into critical eye, given that both builds will have crit boost three. With the Diara Switch Axe, Attack Boost 7 provides 42 raw, and Critical Eye Level 7 provides 4% affinity. So the idea will be comparing the damage that we would deal with each of these. An important factor is that we need to account for other skills we will have in the build. This is because the amount of attack we will have from other skills impacts the benefit of Critical Eye differently than it would impact the benefit of Attack Boost. So in this theoretical comparison, I will be assuming the following damage skills. Level 3 Weakness Exploit, Level 3 Rapid Morph, Level 3 Burst, 1 point in Peak Performance because we will very likely be using the Gold Rathian Gloves, and 1 point in Element Exploit, and 1 point in Critical Element, which will be coming from the Silver Rathalos body. The total attack, not including Attack Boost, would start with 325 on the Diora Switch Axe, plus 15 on the Power Charm and Talon, plus 15 using Level 4 Dango Booster, plus 7 with Diameca Demon Drug, uh, 15 additional raw from having maxed out burst, and plus 5 with peak performance. I am also going to include 20 attack from the petal lace. I know spirit birds are a little divisive, but generally I collect them when I feel like I need them since they provide such a huge benefit. So I'm going to include them in the calculation here. So with critical i7, we have 402 attack with 40% affinity and weakness exploit. And with attack boost 7, we have 444 attack with zero affinity and weakness exploit. So first, let's take a look at the damage of the rapid morph loop combo. This is the combo starting with the morph sword slash, into the sword double slash, into the axe morph double slash. It is the bread and butter combo for switch axe. I have my calculations shown here, and if you're interested in the details, you can pause the video and take a look at them. However, in the interest of time, I'm just going to move on and focus on the results. So with this combo, the expected total damage from Attack Boost 7 and Critical I7 are extremely close, but Critical I7 comes out ahead by like less than 1%. So it's extremely close, but objectively speaking, Crit seems to be doing more damage. So what's going on here? What about the file damage? The file damage with Attack Boost 7 is definitely higher than the Critical I7 as expected. However, the damage from the regular attacks ends up being so much more with Crit that it seems to more than even it out. So this ends up being so close that the difference is more or less indistinguishable, showing that crit is still quite strong on Switch Axe despite not affecting the file damage. Next, let's take a look at the zero sum combo. This is the full zero sum discharge followed by a soaring wyvern blade. In this case, we can see that attack boost 7 is expected to do more damage. The file burst damage difference is quite significant here because the hits are very strong and they ignore raw hit zones. 
This difference is so significant that crit i7 does not overtake on non-vile damage. Next, the elemental burst counter. There are four parts to this attack. The first two hits always happen, but don't need to make contact with the monster, so these won't always hit your target. The first of the two hits is a file burst that ignores raw hit zones. The second is just a normal sword hit. If successful in the counter, there are two additional sword hits. I'll be including all four hits in that calculation just to represent the best case scenario. Similar to the rapid morph combo, the burst counter does very slightly more damage with crit compared to attack. So with this information, it seems like the main difference is a zero sum combo. Depending on how much you use zero sum in your play, will determine which is objectively the best. However, the damage is so close on all of these that in most cases, it will be very difficult to notice a difference at all. Personally, I spend the majority of my time with afflicted hunts, and using zero sum is very... perilous, so I don't use it very much at all anymore. Because of that, I decided to switch over to using crit builds now. So what about Bloodlust and Dereliction? Adding Bloodlust to the build allows the crit build to reach 100% affinity on weak spots after overcoming the Frenzy, since that buff gives 20% affinity. In addition, the Storage Helm gives 2 Coalescence, which will give an additional 15 raw. If we add a point of dereliction, this increases our attack by 25 once we have 3 curios. One thing worth noting with Bloodlust is that you will only need Critical I6 to reach 100% affinity. I won't be assuming any additional skills here, but the build may benefit from additional skill compared to the attack build. So if we give Bloodlust, Coalescence, and Dereliction to both the attack and crit build, we can see that the gap widens and crit just gets better for the grounded combos. This is because as attack increases, crit damage also increases, and with the crit build, it increases at a faster rate. For what it's worth, the difference is still very small. However, the most important takeaway is that crit is not so much worse like we may have thought. So a big part of my channel so far are switch axe builds, and going forward I'm not totally sure whether to recommend attack or crit. I think there's a chance the coming to Ultra set may make me lean more towards crit builds, but generally there are a lot of great armor choices that support the attack builds, and it's generally easier to recommend without requiring all of the RNG mechanics in Monster Hunter Rise. So I'm not totally sure where to go with this in the future, but we will see in Title Update 3. If you're curious about the crit build that I'm using, I'll show it here, but I won't be doing a build video about this yet. With random augments and talismans, I found it difficult to recommend a build just by showing mine. But I was able to build around crit and still have a lot of good comfort skills. I'm on Switch, so none of my stuff is modded. As always, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it or found it helpful, you can help me out by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Hope to see you in the next one. Take care.